Hey family, happy sunshine. We left off in the Knoxville Grand Jury transcript at the end of page 25 going into page 26. Parker still was answering some questions. His answer. Within a day or so, yes ma'am. It's not the money does not stay long, which is, which is characteristic of money laundering. And that's where they're using this term money laundering. Uh, very strange to me. Obviously, if you leave it in the bank, what happens with his, the larger sum, the approximately 945 figure I gave you earlier, the bank will catch on and grab the money back. In this case, though, he pulled out a significant portion and bought the motorhome with it. Question from Cynthia Davidson. And so did you learn from any representatives of either Buddy Gregg or Whitney Bank that they spoke to an attorney regarding these funds? This morning, one of our investigators, I again I believe did confirm that so he's believing again and it's one of our investigators who which one that the two the individuals we heard on the audio were buddy Greg employees now whether he confirmed that they spoke to an attorney I don't know but I <clears throat> you know we have that audio and it's it's clearly available <laughs> wow <clears throat> and so the money transferred to Whitney Bank and was it represents proceeds of some form of unlawful activity very leading question and Parker still just says, it is. It's representative of wire fraud and bank fraud, which is what happened here. And like I said previously, this is, this is something we commonly, this is something we see commonly that bad guys, who, what kind of, what kind of cop, what kind of judge, what kind of lawyer would, would use this label and testimony under oath in front of a grand jury. This is something we see commonly that bad guys, what they do, they purchase things, they hide money, they try to conceal it. <laughs> and yes, wire fraud and wire fraud and bank fraud are two are two common charges that we see associated with money laundering activities because you've got to do something with it. So I'm going to go specifically through the counts. Okay. To make sure that we... I'm sorry. Okay? Count one. And I think you've gone through the scheme. Right. So here's Cynthia's question to Parker. On July 6, 2017, Bean transferred funds he did not own via wire using Federal Reserve routing number 1452 and fictitious account number ending in 1135 to purchase CD number 4613 in the amount of $500,000? And then Parker Stills response is, yes ma'am, on or about that date, absolutely. Uh, on or about that date? Like, what date was it? You've got the records, right? You were investigating this, right? And th this is really Cynthia's is testifying as the U.S. attorney. She's the one providing this information and Parker Stills just up there uh, with his, what is heads on a, 
on one of those bobblehead things and he's just saying yes yes ma'am on or about that date absolutely he's not providing the information here he's just agreeing with her Cynthia is providing all of this information here and so tell me about the explain the wire so the so what we see here is the funds were you know when we generally see wire fraud transactions you know money had to be it used to be a lot of times we'd see paper checks right paper check to somebody but also what within the which in the financial institution wires are commonly used so you know from one account there's one you've got a funding source and an account or you can you know and so the funding source is here and then puts the money in the account here through an electronic process commonly referred to as a wire transfer gosh this is just garbage guys This is not how you explain a wire transaction. On this date, at this time, to this account number of this routing number, Federal Reserve Bank, a wire transfer occurred in the amount of $500,000 and was deposited into USAA account number such and such. This happens electronically across the internet or through secure network or whatever if you want to give general details but she's asking explain the wire well this is a vague question first of all well wh which wire explain the wire I mean I'm just blown away Parker still didn't start talking about that old HBO series explain the wire And did these wires transmissions go through? And one of the one was fed AC. And then Parker cuts her off. Some. Some were. Some were ACH. Most all of these were what we refer to as the automated clearinghouse. ACH transfers. And then I my understanding that one was through Fedwire. Yeah, Parker is cut off the U.S. Attorney's questions quite a few times. And that makes me think that, wow, this is rehearsed and he's like jumping in and nervous and wanting to get his lines right out or I, I don't know what's going on but why is this guy cutting off the person asking questions very strange I can't think of any other reason why somebody uh, who's a judge a lawyer and an FBI agent would would cut somebody off like this. This is this is bizarre. And what is that referring to Fedwire? Let me give you I can give you a little better explanation. The So let's just talk about an ACH. She asked about Fedwire. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess we're going to talk about ACH. That's the like I said, it's an automated clearinghouse, and it's essentially a network for financial institutions. Again, it kind of goes back to my check. You know, we're not using checks so much anymore. We're using one financial institution talking to another financial institution through this automated clearinghouse. So what you have, you have an originator that, you know, 
you can have a direct deposit or a direct payment. And then that's entered electronically and goes to another, you know, financial institution. So that, and the Fedwire works very similar to the, to the same. In this case, I'm using Fedwire. You originate funds by instructing a Federal Reserve Bank to debit funds from its own account and credit funds to another participant. So just we're talking wire transfers. Yes, ma'am. Wow, this is so murky, guys. In this case, I'm using Fedwire. I mean, this man would be smart enough to know that case has a very significant meaning, especially in a courtroom. And if he was talking about this particular instance, this example, I'm using Fedwire, but wow, it's not clear. It, they start off talking about ACH, and now he says, in this case, I'm using Fedwire. And then at the end, he has this really strange conclusion or concluding remark. So just we're talking wire transfers, yes, ma'am. Oh. This is... This is just awful, guys. Another question. <clears throat> and so this, he used in count one, he uses an iPhone app to commit a wire transmission. To, to commit a wire transmission. Wow. Okay. I mean, I, I just don't understand the words that she's choosing to use here. A wire transmission isn't something that's committed. Commit is used to describe an unlawful act that is being done. Wow. And that a signal in, in that... <laughs> Wow, I just tripped right over my tongue. And was that a signal in interstate commerce? Question mark. What, what an interesting question. And so this, he used in count one, he uses an iPhone app to commit a wire transmission. And was that a signal in the interstate commerce? In interstate commerce. And was that a signal in interstate commerce? Wow. I don't know what she means by this question. And I don't know if Parker still knows what she means by this question. But he just says, yeah. It would be a mobile app, so yes, ma'am. Was that a signal in interstate commerce? Wow, do you guys have any ideas about that? Uh, from Davidson. I keep saying iPhone app. Was it an iPhone app? Oh, well, this is something I mentioned earlier. It was. It was a mobile app. Yes, ma'am. It could be an iPhone or... Yes. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> wow, this is bizarre. She wants clarification. I keep saying iPhone app. Was it an iPhone app? It was. And then he's downgrading this. It was a mobile app. Yes, ma'am. It could be an iPhone or... Yes. Wow. Whoa. What is it? Another question. It was an I. What? 
When you say iPhone, it could be used either on an iPhone or or an iPad, right? iPad? I'm not good at that stuff, but yeah, on those electronics, y'all are probably, yeah, it was an app. Oh, wow. I mean, he could have just said iOS. USAA Bank has apps available for several different platforms. Android, iOS. This particular transaction is logged in from an iOS app. That could be either an iPhone or an iPad. Why is there... They're wasting so much time in this hearing bantering back and forth between each other, Parker and Cynthia Davidson, over all of this gibberish, guys. So it was an app that was on some sort of a mobile device. Yes, ma'am. That is information as provided to us by USAA. Who at USAA? <laughs> wow. Experts agree. And they can tell that by looking at their records. And then he cuts her off again. Right. That it was done, and then she's continuing, that it was done through the, through an app. Undoubtedly, yes, ma'am. And they. Who, who is the one that interfaced with the USAA computer systems and pulled up all of this information? Wow. Next question. And so this iPhone app did a wire transmission. And was that signal in interstate commerce? Like she just asked this question. Wow. What? This is, this is very important. She's asking it again. Yes, ma'am. There's no explanation. Does the grand jury even know? And was that signal in interstate commerce? Why didn't he answer it the first time? And now he's just saying, yes, ma'am. Cynthia is doing all the testifying here, guys. Parker still is just a yes man. I, I wonder why. Like this is going totally backwards here. Next question. And based on that, he put in this routing number and this account number to purchase a CD in the amount of $500,000. Again, Cynthia's testifying. Parker's agreeing. And she says, this account number. Why doesn't she read it off? Is there a reason that she doesn't want the account number read into the record? And that happened on 7-6-2017. Again, she's testifying. Yes, ma'am. It's my understanding he... Some of these were initiated on 7-5 actually went through on 7-6. Yes, ma'am. And so, where does Randall Keith Bean reside? Randall Keith Bean resides in Knoxville, Tennessee. Yes, ma'am. Wow. What? Why is he saying yes, ma'am? She's just asking, where does Randall Keith Bean reside? 
Randall Keith Bean resides in Knoxville, Tennessee. Yes, ma'am. Wow, this is just puzzling. And let's talk about count two, the CD number. And then Parker's cutting her off again. Wow. And Ms. Davidson, again, USAA is based out of Texas. Why did he blurt that out? She's puzzled. Texas? Yes, ma'am. And then she's going back to talk about count two. Wow. What? Why did he blurt that out right there? I wonder what explains this bizarre testimony. I mean, I've got a couple different ideas, but I can't root any of them in the factual basis. It's all speculation right now, but this is this doesn't happen in an up and up court proceeding. This doesn't happen when an investigator's done their due diligence. Wow, this is so out of sync with the flow of where they're going. And again, Miss Davidson, USAA is based out of Texas. Texas? Yes, ma'am. And let's talk about count two. Like that's where she was to begin with. Wow. What happened in count two, which is on 7-6-2017? Okay, that is, so then you're seeing CD number was closed and the funds, that's the 499,909 dollars and 55 cents. 59 cents was transferred to Bean's personal account at USAA. Did, did he first say this number and then changed it, this last five to a nine? I'm guessing that's what's going on. It's not clear by the way it's written there. It's like he's pausing and saying, 59 cents was transferred to Bean's personal account at USAA. Huh. Wow, uh, we just... This is unclear, guys. Okay, that is... So then your seeing CD number was closed and the funds, that's the $499,909.55. We've got a double hyphen pause here. 59 cents was transferred to Bean's personal account at USAA. Again, would have been initiated by Bean. How, how does... He doesn't know who's on the other side of this, this app. And that is the CD being liquidated minus the fee for the early liquidation fee and transferred to a personal bank account. And so did that wire transmission, was it a signal in interstate commerce? Yes, ma'am. Wow, again we've got this question. Wow, guys, please, somebody send me an email, lunacy at protonmail.com, L-U-N-A-S-E-E. -E. And was this wire transmission in furtherance of the fraud? Yes, ma'am. I, I mean, who's testifying here? She's not, she's not asking questions that elicit information that, that set up a dialogue where Parker 
explains and articulates the investigation that he conducted, which is the reason that they're all sitting there today. And he's just got gibberish pouring out of his mouth. So that is the end of what he basically transfers his, the 49, I mean, $499,909.59 to his own account. So he was probably just correcting an error in his reporting. Oh no, this is Cynthia Davidson. Well, of course it is. She's the one testifying. So that is the end of what he basically transfers his, the 49, I mean the $499,000, 499, $909,000.59 to his own account. Yes, ma'am. But he's just saying yes, ma'am again. And so do you know what, why some of the money is missing? Yes, ma'am. It's my understanding that that would be an early liquidation fee because it was the 30 day fixed CD. And then count three on the same day? Yes, ma'am, the same thing. This is the $999,000 CD, very similar to the $500,000 CD that was funded. And so he did this with the app? Yes, ma'am. And with the app, he used the routing number ending in 1452? Yes, ma'am. And the fictitious account number ending in 1135? Yes, ma'am. And then the CD was funded in the amount of nine million nine. I mean, sorry, is that right? No, $999,000. Parker Still, that's correct. And back to it. Did this transaction, was it a wire transmission of a signal in interstate commerce? I mean, there, there that question is again. Yes, ma'am. And this transmission, and was this transmission in furtherance of fraud? Yes, ma'am. Count four, also on the same day, 7-6-2017, CD number 4623 in the amount of $999,000 was closed, and funds in the amount of 998819 dollars and 36 cents were transferred via wire to one of Bean's personal accounts, a number ending in 3062. Again, all of this is coming from Cynthia Davidson. All Parker still does is say, that's correct. Yes, ma'am. Now I'll ask you again, was, did he conduct this transaction on an app? and then he gets, she gets cut off. Yes, ma'am. With a wire transmission, she finishes the question. Yes, ma'am. So he's just, he's not even gonna listen to the full question. He's just gonna shoot out yes, ma'ams. This is very strange, guys. And was it a signal that affected interstate commerce? Again, with that question. Yes, ma'am. And was this transaction in furtherance of fraud? Yes, ma'am. On to the next day, July 7, 2017, count five, being transferred $493,110.68 via wire from his personal account number 4026 to Whitney Bank, account number 4960. And this account number belonged to Buddy Gregg, is that correct? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Like this, all of this should be coming to the jury right from Parker Still's mouth, and it's not. For the purchase of a 2017 Integra Cornerstone 45B, 45 month, 45 foot diesel motorhome, question mark? Yes, ma'am. So tell me about that transaction. This was the transaction where the motorhome was purchased. So Mr. Bean would have authorized the wire to be set up from his USAA account to the Whitney 
to Whitney Bank for the for the purchase of that motorhome and this would be essentially a money laundering transaction as well. And so was this done via wire transmission? Right, yes ma'am. And was it was wire this transmission a signal in interstate commerce? It was, yes ma'am. And was this transmission in furtherance of fraud? It was. In fact, this one, ma'am, it's my understanding, was the use of the fed wire transfer. The fed wire transfer? Uh-huh. And then in parentheses, affirmative responses. <clears throat> you know, in the academy, and even before you go into the courtroom, the prosecuting attorney, if you're a law enforcement officer, is going to tell you, answer with a yes or a no. The court reporter doesn't know how to decode a uh-uh from a uh-huh. Like, what, what does that mean? I am so surprised that, that this was accepted here. Usually somebody's going to jump right out and say, oh, please respond with a yes or a no for the court reporter. And so what is the timing of all? What is the fact that it's the very next day tell you? Right. You'll notice the timing is all from, it's a two-day span from July 5th to July 7th. And that tells me that Mr. Bean would know that this money is not rightfully his and has to be moved out of this account. That would be, and then, <clears throat> Cynthia is cutting him off basically immediately. Immediately, yes, ma'am. And so, and then the jurors jumping in here. There are two different personal account numbers there from 3062 to 4026. Was this the accounts? Question mark. Well, this is a good place to pause for now, guys. Again, it's just more of the same stuff. A lot of yes man, yes ma'am, a lot of testimony by Cynthia Davidson uh, wrapped up in the window dressing of asking questions. And I can't imagine at all what it would be like to be a juror in these proceedings trying to make sense of it all. If you got any love lighter links for me, please send me an email, lunacy at protonmail.com. We'll be back for another soon.